problems with people, but I just think it's it's brilliant that you've you kind of just gone now like screw this, I'm doing this and, and doing it, and then found the way around uh, doing it live as well. I think it's I think it's fantastic. I mean, like you know, based on that alone, I'd love to go and see you live. <clears throat> and obviously, I've heard um, some of your stuff on uh, the recorded as well. And I'd love to compare those two experiences because it sounds brilliant to be honest. <laughs> It's quite, it's quite different, and it's nice. But I, I, I would love to have a band. So if anybody's listening, who you know is, um, wants to join my band and can afford to travel around the country doing gigs for no money, mm-hmm. great. Look me up. <laughs> all we right, all have right, an right. audience full of um, self-made millionaires who have nothing yeah. to do with playing music. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, you, you absolutely hit the jackpot. I'm sure you get a hundred, hundred tweets within the next two minutes. <laughs> So, In actual fact, Pepper Jack, who <clears throat> the, the band that I play with, our, our drummer's moved recently because of his job. Oh. So we've been looking for for a new drummer, which actually is the answer to um, I, I can't call you Brian. I've got to call you Doctor because that sounds much more rock and roll. <laughs> but, uh, that's actually the answer to Doctor's um, earlier remark about the drum kit. Um, <laughs> for, for the live thing, I've gone out. I only actually want the bass drum because I'm actually going to start playing the bass drum while I'm playing guitar. A little bit like the kind of C6 Steve thing, um, you know, because we can't find a drummer. So, you know, I've got to do it myself. Why not? (laughs) So we're going to get to uh, the second single here by Diesel Mayo. One's one's called 20 Days. Dig this. Days Diesel May. Uh, I've we've commented on the song many times, but it's a great tune. And uh, I know that it was pointed out that uh, it sounds like a little bit of country in there, and there 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 is like mixed alternative, but it's a cool mix. And like, I love the vocals. I just 
it's it's a really a very very catchy tune. Something something I've always got into like super quick, and I love this tune, Mike. Yeah, I mean, for, I've, I've said loads of times that I just think this is a really really cool tune. It's it's, it's like it's really catchy. The vocal harmonies are great. The way the uh, guitar sort of breaks down and comes up and everything is cool. I just think in terms of songwriting, it's it's a really accomplished tune. So well done. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> We dig. <laughs> <laughs> we dig it a lot. Thank you very much. So uh, the, the next question would be, is uh, when is the next single coming up and is it going to kind of follow the same guidelines or is it going to be a little bit different? That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we've, we've been in the studio quite a bit this year working on stuff for next year and um, we... Obviously, with doing it ourselves, it's, it's independently. The nice thing is you don't have um, any particular schedule to work to, no deadlines of a record company saying you've got to have this ready by this date and this date. So we, we kind of just go with the flow with regards to um, what's going on because obviously, you know, we've, Jack, who I work with, he's self-employed producer, mix engineer, He's got other projects that come up. Um, I run my own business as well, and also trying to juggle the music thing between work. So it's kind of like looking for the opening when you know you're actually going to be able to dedicate um, lots of time to the promotion of it. It's all very well having these things, but if you don't follow it up with, you know, plugging the radio stuff and right. going to do some shows and that kind of thing, it, you know. You might as well not release uh, anything. You really have to, have to follow it up. And and up. this is the second single, and, and even sort of nine months after it's been released, um, I'm still still getting on new shows and new people still discovering it. And I'm still, you know, working so many hours a day to make sure that people get to hear it. So it's um, it actually is sort of a full time job with just working on the promotions for each track, single. So the, the next one, I'm kind of yeah, having a little break at the moment, just having a, a little bit of a breather yeah. and sort of working up my stamina to go for it. So it's going to be mm, early part of next year. Okay, right on. Um, but we've actually got two two tracks coming out next year because um, I've, I've been asked to... Um, I don't normally do covers. I'm not a covers person. Um, and I was actually asked to do a cover for a, a compilation album, a charity compilation album that's coming out. Um, and it's called Promotion. And it's a tribute to Freedom Clearwater nice. and um, John Fogarty. And we were all asked to do certain tracks, um, which was a real challenge for me because. As I say, I'm, I don't like doing covers. I, I, I don't know, I just kind of try and steer away from it. Right. I, I know a lot of people do, but it was a real challenge because I, I, you've got to do something a bit special for it to be better than the original. And you kind of open yourself up for a lot of criticism, you know, because there's. Well, <laughs> that's. that's that's the thing is with the, with the cover, you can either do it justice or you can butcher it. There's no, there's no real in between, unfortunately. Yeah, it's it's really tricky one. So um, we were set that challenge, and it it we think it's worked out okay. Um, so that, that's going to be coming out next year as well, um, which is really good because there's a, a selection of some fantastic um, American artists on there as well. Uh, Irene Penner, Gretchen's Will, um, and the producer Fernando Podomo. He's he's doing some a track on there, maybe one or two tracks. So that's that's really cool. That that's coming out next year as well. I can't give dates just yet. Uh, kind of just kind of organise it. I think the, the, the compilation album is coming out in May. Um, but with regards to my my single, I'm sort of trying to get everything in place at the moment for the video. Um, Jim down to get in those leather trousers that I bought to wear in it. You know. <laughs> Christmas out of the way. Oh. Yeah, yeah, just... yeah, that's not going to help. 
Although those, uh, you know, boxes of quality streets, not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's never a good time of year to record a video. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so good, but look at me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, the, the camera puts a, a good few pounds on you as well, doesn't it? So, so yeah, kind of, yeah, early next year-ish. But yeah. don't hold me to that. No, 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 that's fine. No, we, we get a lot of it. It's all good. So I'm gonna pass. Uh, so Mike, your your turn, buddy. Yeah. So so um, I, I was trying to think because we've got two interviews tonight, and, and the last couple of interviews we've done, uh, we've sort of uh, gone off track and asked some random questions. <laughs> and I've got some good feedback from them. So I was thinking, what can I ask uh, Diesel May, and what can I ask Manipulant later? Uh, and I was I was kind of going through and uh, you know trying to think of some. Uh, uh, some, some reasonably random but also not so obscure that no one will be able to answer questions so I've got a couple here I think some are better than others you can give me feedback on the questions as well but uh, one of them someone sent me this it's a bit cliche but I quite like it because it gives you an insight to the person it says if you're an animal what would you be and why mm, that's a really that's a really tricky one <laughs> it is actually isn't it I think you're a tiger yeah, I don't know. I think I'd like to be one that wouldn't be hunted or eaten. <laughs> That's a brilliant, brilliant answer. So <laughs> I'm kind of guessing this is a really well, not guessing. I, I can't, it doesn't actually sum up a really good picture, but I'm kind of going to say slug. Uh, a slug. Nobody <laughs> wants to eat a slug. Nobody okay. wants. We've seen those programs where they put celebrities that no one's ever heard of in the jungle and make them eat slugs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that, that's only once a year. <laughs> that's true. And there's probably enough slugs in the world that it's unlikely you'd, you'd be there. Yeah. And they might say, we're not doing slugs this year, we're doing kangaroo tests. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> I, well, I know this is only the, the second time you've asked this question, Mike, but and I was just thinking of, just because I know it reminded me of the second Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me, when he's the photographer, it's like you're you're a tiger, you know. You know I guess I guess you're not. Oh, bro, bro, bro. Like you know, like and that's like, I, don't, I don't. That's exactly what I was thinking of for some reason. I was just kind of cracking me up. That's why. I, that's when when Diesel started talking. He said, "Oh, you're a tiger," and and she actually heard it. You know, singing lower. So so well 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 uh, well said. Well answered there, Diesel. <laughs> I did. I did think uh, to myself, I wasn't asking Bainsey, but that's yeah. <laughs> well, I just because it popped in my head, right? So I just kind of had to talk, and God knows, plenty of people tried to shut me up, and it hasn't really worked. And so, quick, quick side track on that, real, real quick. Now, Mike, you've heard the story before, but uh, when I was twenty, I think it was like twenty twenty one, I had my all, all four of my wisdom teeth out, and uh, well, yeah, they were in practice. I didn't think out while I was in the U.S. before I moved back to Canada. Cause it was kind of back and forth sort of thing. So I got all four of them taken out, and we were. I was walking out after surgery, and I was walking out with the with the dental assistant, and uh, she says, she "Goes, don't say a word." She goes, "Just nod yes or no if you got someone picking you up." And of course, you know, I talked, you know, and she said, "How? Why are you talking?" And we're we're we're, we're pretty close to the door, and you can hear my mom chucking on their side because she heard it too, right? And, and, and she she's like trying to shut them up, eh? Because I've been trying for about twenty years. Good luck. <laughs> So. I love it. I, I, I mean, I think it's very telling if, if someone sort of, you know, runs and puts on their own podcast, they're probably not someone you can shut up very easily. <laughs> <laughs> I have to talk about something. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, right. So there's my little side track. So uh, uh, Diesel, back to... Yeah, yeah. Back to Diesel. I'm a slug. I'm not running anywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of, kind of dawdling along, you know? So, uh, next question, and I know uh, Mike probably was uh, curious about this too, is, is about your recording process. Like, how do, how do you kind of come to the table and do everything, like, i.e., like writing the song, lyrics, that sort of thing? Yeah. Um, well, what actually kind of happens is I go through phases. I'm not sure if, you, if this happens to you, Mike, when you're writing stuff. It's like binge writing. I won't have any ideas or nothing will come to me for, for absolutely ages and then all of a sudden tunes riffs things will just start flowing and sort of pouring out of me normally at 
four in the morning, you know, when you're asleep and then this riff comes into your head.